we want to promote this discussion because uh, we are uh, we are all currently aware of the uh, importance of digital competencies and we are all working uh, on them and advocating for them uh, and we understand that uh, it is fundamental for us uh, to make sure that uh, the fundamental and basic levels of digital competencies are included and well addressed in frameworks. Uh, we know the European framework Digcom, uh, is working uh, on promoting uh, the general um, the general digital competencies, uh, and we are also aware that there's uh, a lack of representation on this. Uh, so we want to create this space, first of all, uh, to bring this topic to the table and to jointly understand the importance of covering up this topic. Uh, but most of all, and this is the most important part and the, the dynamic of this meeting of uh, just being a few of us, friends and colleagues that we know each other uh, to, to share these ideas, to be an open exchange. This is not an event. This is not a webinar. This is a dialogue session. Uh, and we we know each other, most of us, we will now uh, move to the introductory part, uh, but we want to know uh, your experiences, we want to know what we bring to the table and how does it inspire your work, uh, and what you're current, currently undergoing in your, in your local field uh, on this topic. Uh, so first of all, I would like to take the, the chance to, to briefly introduce each other, so we can, uh, we can know who's on the table, I'm going to start with myself, and then I'm going to move on as I have your uh, your names uh, on the on the screen. Uh, I'm uh, Silvana de Marte. I'm the communication and uh, community engagement officer at the Digital Collective, uh, and I'm super excited for having the opportunity to join this with all of you. I'm going to give the floor uh, to Jack now for his introduction. All right, thank you, um, Silvano. Uh, hi, I'm Jacques. Uh, I work uh, at Le Monde des Possibles uh, in Belgium at Liège. Uh, so uh, what I do is uh, I have a, a group of 10 to, to 12 uh, learners and uh, we learn the basics of IT uh, every day morning. Uh, so it's, um, it's doing great right now. Uh, we have a lot uh, to improve and we, uh, uh, we're looking forward to uh, things uh, uh for the next sessions <laughs> i'm not i'm not going too far because i, I know everyone is going to introduce right. themselves thank you. thank you Jack, for that one uh uli you're next but i'm gonna leave you to the end because you deserve a special introduction as your special guest for this so i'm gonna skip you for now and i'm gonna give the floor to julia Yes, hello, welcome everyone. My name is Julianne. I'm the chair of the board of Grenzenlos Digital. We are a nonprofit organization based in Berlin, Germany, and we promote digital inclusion and digital skills, as well as digital literacy. And um, we focus on refugee and migrant groups. Thank you so much, Julianne, for that. Uh, Martina. Um, hello everyone, I'm Martina, I just joined the, the team at Digico, I'm supporting in the project management uh, of Digico LIA and also for some aspects, Silvana and Mercedes with the communication mm -hmm. aspects and I'm, I'm very excited about this session, it's uh, probably the first one uh, that I face all together, so looking forward, thank you. Thank you, Marty. Uh, and Julia? Hello, everyone. Um, I am Anna, Anna Julia Danisch, um, and I am leading the project INTRO, Internet Recherche Communication at Grenzenlos Digital e.V. Um, and uh, in this project, we teach basic digital skills to refugees and migrants in order to help them entering the labor market. And right now we are about to start um, with the second cohort and we're doing an online course. So we're in the um, <laughs> exciting preparation phase. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Anna Julia. Uh, Judith, I would like to move on to you. Um, hello, um, I'm uh, Judith from uh, Austrian Institute for uh, research on uh, vocational training. I'm working with uh, Alexander Schmelt 
um, who invited me uh, into this group. So I'm <laughs> not sure how to, yeah, what to uh, speak about here. Uh, but um, yes, I'm working in projects uh, regarding the national qualification framework, and we are also working um, with uh, the uh, DigiComp uh, framework um, and doing um, research on a framework um, for digital uh, digital uh, education. Yeah. Thank you so much, Judith, for that one. Uh, Egle, if you're available to present yourself as well. Hello, I'm sorry, I'm still in Mecca, so I will be uh, I'll be at home really soon. I'm representing uh, Lithuania College of Democracy, this is scientific think tank, and I would like to highlight one of our projects is digital uh, inclusion for all, and we're focusing on vulnerable group inclusion for improving digital competence. Yeah, thank you so much and thank you thank and thank you for joining us and for taking the call from your car we appreciate that please take care of yourself uh mercedes would you like to go next hi good afternoon everybody i'm mercedes uh, i work uh, in the communications area with digital mostly with silvano uh for those of you who still don't know me i'm the person behind uh, most of the posts in the community of practice so for me it's very exciting to meet you digitally meet you those faces I still didn't know, so I'm very excited to be part of this event today. Thank you, Mercedes, for that. Um, Subairu, could you would you mind going next? <clears throat> okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Subairu Jibril. I'm from Nigeria. I'm the founder of ZTech Foundation. So ZTech Foundation is a foundation that aims at promoting digital literacy across. Uh, rural, urban, <clears throat> and on the SAP communities. So what we do at ZTech Foundation, we do our best to educate people on the application of technology toward making uh, a life-changing opportunity. So part of what we do is <clears throat> we don't only introduce them to digital literacy, we also introduce them to how to stay safe online. So as we introduce them on, um, on the digital literacy aspect of it, we also teach them on how to stay safe online. So we also train them like students in secondary schools, high school. We train them on the basics of robotics, how they could use all these things toward solving uh, community problems. So we're trying to uh, bring up uh, problem solvers. So we are working toward a project that aims at introducing robotics, AI technology to the special people with the special needs. Uh, by getting the deaf and the cripple. Thank you. Thank you so much for that presentation. Uh, Leah, I will invite you uh, to go next. Hi, everyone. Really good to see everyone. So I'm part of the Digico team as well. I am in charge of programs at Digico, meaning uh, the projects that we fund, but also our amazing platform Skillify based on Digicom. So that's why I'm joining today. We're doing a lot of work at Digico to make sure that our platform is as accessible as possible for everyone. And this relates to what we're going to discuss today with the Austrian uh, framework uh, adapted um, from Digicomp. And so I'm super happy to see all of you. Really happy to see that everyone is interested in this topic because we really are here at Digico. Um, so looking forward for our talk. And don't hesitate to get in touch with me if um, you're interested in using Skillify. Um, um, to test the digital skills of your students. Feel free to reach out. Thank you for, for the intro, yeah. And that moves, moves me to my uh, next presentation. I will take some minutes uh, um, before uh, giving you the floor because this is exactly what Leah presented what brought us to the table. Uh, we, as Digico, developed uh, an assessment tool that is based on Digicom to measure the level of uh, digital skills. Um, that is being used by most of our partners. Some of you are uh, here with us uh, on this meeting, uh, but we understood that there's a, a lack of representation inside this framework. Uh, we work on basic digital skills and we understand that basic digital skills are fundamental for not only social, but also for uh, economic integration. Um, and while analyzing this comp, we realized that there's a lack of representation for uh, individuals uh, on foundational and access level 
uh, at this framework and we understand that this uh, is a prerequisite uh, for individuals to lead a decent life, uh, to actively participate in society, of course, to have access to jobs uh, and to move on on these careers. Uh, so we understand that this uh, underrepresentation uh, is an urgent matter that we need to address. And we, as a network organization in Europe, are actively working to advocate for, uh, for this matter. When we start analyzing this and we started to advocate on, on, on this matter and to create this space to discuss this inside of our community, uh, when we realize that this framework uh, is leading behind the interdependency between literacy and digital literacy, we came out. We came out around uh, fit for internet organization in Austria. Uh, this organization did not only uh, anal analyze this lack of representation of Digicom in advance, but they uh, created a specific framework that was applied on their local uh, on the local policy and working in close collaboration with government to make sure that uh, basic digital competencies are. Uh, working properly in uh, trainings and in representation levels inside the country. Uh, and this is why Ulrike is uh, here with us. Uh, Fit for Internet is a member of our organization. Ulrike Domani Funtan is the Secretary General of this organization. And we have the honor of having her here with us to present this framework, to uh, analyze with us the, the amazing work that, that, that they did, and to bring this as an inspiration for us to start a conversation on how we can use their experiences as a benchmark on our regional advocacy to uh, amplify the level of representation of Vichcom, but also to invite all of you to uh, share with us your national experiences, your, the problems that you're having with under this underrepresentation and uh, the, the projects that you're currently working or promoting uh, with your local governments uh, around this. So to address this introduction, I would like to give you the floor, Uli, and thank you uh, to for being here with us. Thank you very much, Silvano. Hi, um, great to meet everyone, virtually at least, um, hopefully um, in person another time. Um, yes, very happy to see also Judith uh, Proinger here because she's a co-author of the latest version of our Digicom um, in Austria. So um, she might add an, also a pers pers perspective um, on, on what I'm presenting afterwards. Um, I would jump right into the presentation, then please feel free to jump in. I only have three slides I would go through. Um, and uh, as I understood, um, Silvano, it should be discussion. So I'm happy to, you know, get your questions and discuss with you how we approached um, um, the DICOM national um, adaptions in Austria. So I will share the screen, just a second. Um, and I got some guiding questions from Silvano, which was great. So I tried to at least, you know, use that as a kind of um, guideline. So, of course, as um, and I think that that unites us all, um, we all know that digitization starts with the people. So it's um, not about the processes. It is too, but it's really if people don't understand and navigate the digital world, um, they, they really have a problem. So we need to look into those groups, vulnerable groups that are not part of the digital world um, so far or that have issues to enter the digital world, but also those who are in the digital world um, because um, it is changing so fast and we need to um, stay in line with the developments. And um, of course, there's a reason why digital skills are one of the eight competencies for lifelong learning. So what we did in Austria was um, um, our NGO was founded in 2018 in, and we collaborated with the um, um, public authorities at that time to um, really find the right tool to make digital competences understandable for people um, to like you know how you have the, the uh, common um, language framework and we looked into where is a digital framework that could be used um, to make it more accessible and understandable for people so we of course came to the digicom of the european union um, as uh, as the best one also to align our um, efforts um, in austria with the european strategy but what we saw at that time, uh, working with experts and also analyzing different kind of um, competency frameworks for, for uh, the digital world at the time, we, we saw that for the Austrian needs, we needed um, to have some amendments. And that's why we um, created, still in line with the European uh, model or framework, 
um, an Austrian version, which is called Digicom 2.2 AT, and it was published in 2019, um, which amended certain parts of um, the Digicom 2.1 of the European Commission. And why was it? Because um, we just saw in terms of, you know, the competency areas, they were very well framed and, and everything, you know, in line what we needed in Austria, but um, certain single competencies were miss missing. And you see the yellow highlighted ones in the competency areas, one to five, um, where those where we just decided to amend them in Austria to meet the needs of First of all, the, the um, society in Austria, but also of the of the um, corporates and of the public administration requirements, um, and that was the reason um, why an expert group, together with field. Um, experts, so scientific community was aligned with experts from different kind of sectors, um, from different kind of adult um, education organizations, um, from uh, um, social partners and so on, worked together to get these um, uh, amendments discussed um, and framed and um, up in the field in, in 2019. What we really missed um, at that time, and that was a, a, a feedback we got from so many players um, in the digital arena, was that it's nice to deal with information and data, that it's nice to communicate and collaborate, but we don't reach those people who don't understand, uh, you know, what the digital world is, what the concepts of um, the internet, the digitalization are, how they are should handle devices. It was still at a time where 30%, 40% of the generation 60 plus in Austria was not entering the digital world. And then Corona, corona the pandemic uh, uh, came. So we had um, at that time already the insights that we needed to get you know, a foundation and access competency area into the conversation, but also in the area of evaluation and qualification. And that is the reason why we amended the Digicom 2.1 with the competency area zero, um, with um, three um, competencies, single competencies at that time. That was the best guess at the time. Of course, we had some um, um, also developments um, in between and, and Silvano asked me how we, um, you know, could uh, stay in line with the developments and also keep the community um, in interaction and you see here a cycle of what kind of iterations um, we took to um, understand what the market needs. So no matter if it's the labor market, if it's society, if it's companies, if it's public administration, and um, what you know the framework could do with it. And um, so we had um, a um, task force being set up and maybe I just move to the learnings and move out afterwards uh, back to the cycle. Um, we had to, to align all stakeholders behind the idea that the digital uh, competency framework is something relevant for them and that they are part of the um, involvement and, and the creation. So a pact for digital skills was established in 2018, where the government together with industry players, but also with different kind of players signed that they will work on the um, implementation of the DigComp and also on the curation of it. And so we also implemented a multidisciplinary task force at the time where Alexander Schmolz, the colleague, colleague um, of um, UDIT, um, was part of from the beginning on and uh, is today our research in residence um, to administer the, the process of bringing together all the different players and working on the DigComp and its implementation. Um, so this was quite a tricky process we have um, so far around um, 60 to 70 task force members which are nominated um, or were nominated by the minister of digitalization at the time um, and they brought of course in different perspectives perspectives um, and that was definitely one of the key success factors to make it relevant for so many different groups um, it was also important for us, no matter what the national amendments and needs were, that we stay in line with the European framework so that we really, you know, stay in line with the structure, with the eight competency levels, um, with these um, uh, kind of guidelines we got from the Joint Research Center. And we also stayed in line in conversations with the GRC um, to, you know, keep each other updated on, on the um, experiences we had um, in implementing and what kind of amendments would 
would make sense. Um, and considering these digital no or low liners was very important to us. So whatever we did afterwards in implementing tools based on the DigComp, we tried really to implement easy language, accessibility, um, also have multiplicators from the different target groups that could reach out to people uh, like no liners. So how would you reach them digitally? You can't, so you need to go on an analog um, way to, to um, get uh, to them and really, you know, um, uh, whatever, um, raise their curiosity about the digital world. Um, it was a highly iterative development of the DigComp, um, and that's where we landed in December 2022 when we introduced and published the DigComp 2.3 version, which I will quickly show to you later on. And we always had a very clear roadmap. So we said, you know, we, we need one standard, which is the DigComp adapted to national needs. We need evaluation tools um, based on the DigComp um, for different kind of target groups and topics. We also need the qualification aligned behind it in terms of how adult education and also now that the school system, you know, reflects on the on the DigComp. And of course, we need, especially for the labor market, the certification. And we wanted to reach all of this within four years, which we almost did. Um, corona was in between, but in within the fifth year, we have now the whole system set up in Austria, which goes from standardization to certification. Um, and what I said is that we always stay in all developments very aligned with the EU policies and actions like um, the Digital Skills and Job Coalition, like the um, European Qualification Framework, like the European Digital Credential Infrastructure, where our certification scheme is based on also to Europass and so on. These were the main factors, what I think were really the success factors, why the DigComp, you know, could evolve over time and is implemented in even more and more areas. Is it already there where it should be no but i think we are on a good way going back to the circle um just um, um you know summing up we had always the task force um, taking place um, every quarter with one big um, conference once a year for two days where we discussed and worked on um, the experiences on the DigComp itself on um, projects, pilot projects that were done by different players. We came up in 2022 with a white paper summarizing our, our work so far and coming to the DigComp 2.3, um, we started with um, scenario workshops, you know, the collecting all the experiences our players had with um, the Digicom so far. We did a task force consultation process quite, ex uh, um, quite extensive. We had expert panels from the field, from different sectors and branches to just bring in the experiences. We co-developed and co-created the scenarios and items for the evaluation tools based on the Digicom 2.3. We had then the framework upgrade to the to the version Digicom um, 2.3 in August. Again, a consultation process with different players and the public authorities, and um, with this feedback back to the task force. And then, you know, the final quality assurance and editing. And finally, in November, December 2022, we could publish it. And I will just jump to it. Um, what you see on the um, left side of the screen is the European version, um, Digicom 2.1 to the Digicom 2.2 version. And what you see on the left side highlighted in, in blue was the um, amendments we did in 2019 in Austria and the red ones are the ones that are now being introduced with the 2.3 version. And you see there was quite an extensive um, amendment because we just saw in our work, our pilot projects, in the feedback of the stakeholders that we needed to do a amendments based on the current developments. It's about, you know, um, the creation, production, publication of content if you go to the um, competency area three, um, because it's not about just only digital content. We now have, you know, digital objects, especially if you go into industry. Um, we have the, the um, every one of us is in the meantime an author um, of digital content, so we needed to bring in the publishing um, um, competencies. Um, of course, the, the whole sustainability part, um, you know, you have the twin transformation, digital and, and um, sustainable um, green um, transformation. We needed to bring that part more into the um, ICT arena and so on. So you see there were very different kind of experiences and backgrounds that um, were are, um, considered and finally that's what we are working now in Austria with and where do we stand with beginning of 2023 is 
We have published uh, the new version. We are working with this version since January. We have in the meantime, o o meantime over 30 um, tools for evaluating digital competencies, um, very low threshold with self-evaluation self tools and you know, with knowledge-based um, uh, tools. So where we really um, can understand um, where people are. And we have about 100,000 um, persons in Austria that have already used it um, in the past two and a half years. And we have also a tool that is um, for organizations and for, um, um, for, for corporates that um, can use the software as a solution tool to, have to use it in, in the comp corporate context. And then qualification was very important. How do you align a competency profile with uh, the training and the qualifications? Um, so we worked on the referencing process with um, adult education um, institution and formal um, institutions, um, education institutions, how they could um, reference their offers they have to the DigComp. That was a very important process so we could align evaluation and qualification. And finally, um, we worked the past two and a half years also with the OEBF um, very um, hard and with other scientific institutes on how to validate um, psychometrically um, the um, the general digital knowledge, not the, the so much the application, but really this basic knowledge that you need to navigate the digital world uh, up to competency level five of the DigComp. We also worked on an e-portfolio for digital skills uh, called the Digital Skills Profile that will be launched in Q3 uh, probably or Q2. Um, and we are also published recently um, an ISO norm 17024 standard compliant um, certification procedure up to competency level eight. So that's how, how we apply the DigComp in Austria and based on a very co-creative approach um, and multidisciplinary approach. So with this, I stop and um, I'm very curious to hear, you know, what you think about, what your experiences are and, and maybe what your questions are. Thank you so much, Uli, for, for this presentation. I think that the, that, that the experience of Fit for Internet and the development of this, of this project is, uh, is a great uh, milestone, uh, not only for your local, but also for the regional agenda. Uh, I, I'm delighted to know that uh, you could uh, understand uh, such a concrete need uh, and, and know that you needed to work in collaboration with other actors, uh, economic, both uh, political and social actors, to, to develop this framework and for it to be um, applied uh, at the national level. And, and it also has an impact on the regional level. Uh, it's, it, it's present uh, in, in dialogue with the commission and, uh, and, and GRC as well. Uh, I, now, I would like to, to open up the floor um, uh, for experiences. Uh, we are friendly faces uh, sharing this space. And I think that uh, the, the case that uh, Ulrike presented on the Fit for Internet side uh, is an amazing success story, but it started with the understanding of an issue, a problem uh, of a lack of representation matter uh, that was properly addressed uh, in a collective way. So this is exactly what we're trying to do here. We're trying to bring uh, the obstacles that each of you can understand at, at your local point uh, and know that if we can join uh, our, our efforts and we can join our, our understanding, we can achieve uh, successes just like the, the one uh, Ulrike shared with us. So I would like to, to open the floor for any comments, questions, or experiences that you would like to share. Raise your hand and uh, open up your mic, of course. Jack, please go ahead. Well, first of all, thank you for the presentation. Um, one thing that, uh, that I thought about my uh, group is that, um, and, and, and I, I'm sure uh, the uh, Grins and Loss uh, team will agree, uh, we have people with urgent needs and it makes it so we cannot have really have the time to um, to de develop further things on uh, on categories like three, four or five. And um, so this is this is this can be uh, an issue uh, because people come comes with, as I said, urgent needs and uh, they're not that quite often they're there uh, so they can have help help on something uh, and uh, in my in, in the example of my class uh, digilab we have I have 30 days in order to make them uh, comfortable 
with the di digital world. So it's not easy. I, I mean, the, the, the big picture is, uh, looks amazing, but, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see, uh, how, how can I, uh, how can I ever reach that? <laughs> Yeah, that's my should, should I should, should I um, tap in, Jacques? I, I fully agree with you. So we had the same experience. So what what only works, and I think it's a really a, a, a co-creation, collaborative approach um, from different players. So we knew at the time when we started that there are so many NGOs, adult education organizations, and so on in the market, but they didn't use, you know, they didn't tap most of the time into the digital um, kind of upskilling or digital skilling arena because it was so hard, um, you know, to address target group needs, especially if you go to no or low liners. And so we started as we saw that this was quite a wide field in Austria, we started to co develop um, um, training tools. We also um, did train the trainer um, um, uh, uh, kind of, of session. So we have 140 trainers uh, in Austria in every region 10, which is absolutely um, okay for, for the size of Austria. That can be addressed if um, you have no liners that need to tap into the digital world for the first time. And so organizations can, you know, reach out to them. They are trained um, and they can, um, you know, help in terms of setting up training, setting up for the local needs and so on. So this was a start. And actually we just pushed, you know, um, one time uh, this, this uh, kind of um, train the trainer um, sessions. And now it's um, used by many different adult education organizations already. So we didn't need to, to um, um, uh, maintain it for a long time. It took about one and a half years to get it up and running from the market itself because they saw there is a need, but you need to reach the people. So just, just as an example. Amazing for that, uh, Ricky. Uh, I totally agree, and 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 of course we see the difficulties that this uh, that this might present, and and the urgency while while trying to to address this this matter. Uh, the, the fundamental reason why we're bringing up this conversation and why we agree with the urgency, Jack, that that you're presented, is that we understand that if something is not represented, it cannot be uh, it cannot be covered and protected. By, by by local and regional policies. So it's exactly that, that fundamental underrepresentation that this framework brings that creates the urgency because policymakers cannot address what they what they are not representing on uh, on, on the policies that they are creating. And that's why we are pushing to create a regional framework that brings this uh, urgency uh, to the table. So uh, thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that uh, with us. Uh, Julian, you, I see that you raise your hand. Yes, um, thank you. So I wanted to say thank you uh, to Ulrike for this very interesting presentation. I have a question for you. So on your slide, you um, I saw this uh, found, uh, the foundation level you introduced, which um, I really like, and I think it's so important. And I think that's what we all see when we uh, do the when we teach um, people low digital skills that it's not that they are not quite there yet at the first level or the second level or that something is missing when when we try to also assess them and i wanted to ask do you have assessment tools for this foundational level are you working with um i don't know test questions or yeah um yeah so so um so I think we have to differ differentiate between the competency level zero, so understanding mm -hmm. concepts and access, mm -hmm. and the the, the um, competency level. So the problem is, of course, we only reach in the digital world people with competency level one at least. So they know how to use a smartphone or a laptop or whatever kind of digital um, device to enter the digital world to reach an evaluation, right? So. Um, if we have someone you know who is already capable of it no problem yes we have the evaluation tools we have called it digimeter or digital competency scale um, which um, has 10 self-evaluation questions that were psychometrically validated that gives at least a first direction where people stand in terms of self-evaluation and then we have knowledge-based questions but these are for for upper levels um, the, the, the problem we saw was exactly what also Shaq said the, the, how do you reach those vulnerable groups that you really you know that have urgent needs 
to enter the digital world for personal reasons, for professional reasons, for whatever pandemic reasons. Um, how do you reach them? And that you can only do by taking their hand and just, you know, um, bring them to the first step of how do you use the device. And we really had kind of, um, you know, we called it Cafe Digi Digital, where people came together that have never, ever entered the digital world. So they didn't use a smartphone, a, a laptop, a, a tablet, and had them in one and a half coffee sessions with one trainer, 10 people, just to first tap on a touchscreen and um, what a smartphone is. And um, there were fears like, oh, I delete the internet, right? No, you don't delete it, you delete an app. So you needed to bring these kind of understanding to it. And then if they once tap the world, you can go further with them. But it's a really low threshold analog approach and you need resources and you need money for it. Mm -hmm. And then you can go into evaluation and all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. That's, I hope it helped in terms of, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, any other questions or experiences? Remember that it's also uh, great to know uh, any barriers and obstacles you are, uh, you're uh, seeing at, your, at the local level, the trainings that you're developing um, with this underrepresentation uh, that you can have. Julian, yes. Um, yes. Um when I look at our trainings, I see, um, or what I never see represented in these frameworks is the difference between mobile use and laptop use, right? Because the smartphone is just so different from the human computer interaction side that every, if, if you only use the smartphone, that does not mean you can use the, the laptop, but the other way around, it might work pretty well, right? And we see this all the time that for example, people on um, never need their password on the smartphone and then they cannot log in once they are on a laptop. And all this stuff takes um, a lot of time during the course and it's hard to know before you start the course at which level the people are at. Sometimes the people know about that, about the concepts of cloud and email and stuff like that. But I sometimes feel that um, this good human interaction of the smartphone really uh, made it hard to convey uh, concepts which are not so hidden in the laptop, like, you know, saving a file or searching and stuff like that. So, and yeah, I think it's not represented in the frameworks at all, this yeah, kind of a problem, yeah. It's true. I when when we were discussing with with Rick on, on on our preparations, uh, and, and they brought the they introducing uh, this uh, this zero competence. Uh, we we thought of the discussion of okay, there's there's a need for a zero competence, but there's a need for a zero level, and they both uh, both need to be pressed and pushed uh, simultaneously because this is a is is a need that's created uh, uh, simultaneously and interdependently, um, and very relevant on that side. Anyone else? I have a question for uh, Enrique. Um, do you have any examples of organizations or training projects that already implemented this new framework you developed? Uh, if any, if not, is it planned in the future? Um, so I guess you mean the Digcom 2.3? That's a new version, right? Yes. So yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the the two point two that you developed in twenty nineteen because you're still developing. Yeah. The new of version. course. Uh, yeah. 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 We have as a two point two was is and that's always the tricky part. You know, if you don't come with a new version of a of a framework, that's always you know align everyone behind the next version. Um, we have um like the Wifi, which is one of the biggest um um adult education organizations uh, for corporates um, they have implemented we have the labor market service that has implemented the digcom 2.2 in all of the job profiles so they have mapped in their um, job profile search engine the digcom 2.2 for digital competencies so we have um um, training providers that, that they use the Digcom for, you know, referencing their courses to the Digcom. And we have now the, um, there is Digitale Grundbildung, which means digital uh, basic education in school, which is a new um, kind of, of a uh, uh, curriculum for um, the um, um, secondary school. They have also referenced it to the Digcom. So it's, you know, used in different kind of 
adult or, or also formal education, school education um, uh, scenarios. And the 2.3 is now used, all our evaluation tools are based on the 2.3 with April. So we changed it everything um, and amended it. Um, the DigiCom 2.3 is then used also by the adult education for the referencing process from April on. And so, you know, everyone who worked with the DigiCom 2.2 will jump on it. And we have now a big initiative in Austria where the, the, the federal government is supporting the implementation, where they also bring it to universities and applied um, universities, universities of applied science and so on. Yeah. Thank you, Ulrike, for that one. Uh, Ali, I saw you, Alejandra, I saw you had your hand raised. Yes, hello. Um, my question was similar to what Lea was just asking and also to add a comment. Um, thank you, Ulrike, also for, for the presentation. Uh, while listening, it was constantly this feeling of we were missing this level zero, you know, so it was great, you know, to see it there and, and also the comment to the rest of uh, the persons that they have been participating or contributing. It resonates a lot to what we are uh, facing at Ready School. And it is basically the access and the first or the level zero, how to bring uh, all of our participants, students to a level one, even though we start in level one, because this is where we are. Uh, and it was just, you know, like to share the point that all the, the, the comments that they have been shared, we are also uh, experiencing them. And it's been uh, great to have some light right now, Rike, to see that you know that uh, there's been other initiatives pushing a little bit and showing us a path uh, that we can also, you know, start um, implementing and and exploring uh, with with our students too to make it a little bit more easy for them, uh, while at the same time is pressing for them to understand the digital world and to integrate to the digital world for uh, life reasons, but also professional reasons, right? To bring some dignity, to bring uh, better opportunities in. In their, in their life. So that was that was it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ale, uh, for sharing this. Um, I'll I move forward and if you have any any comments or questions that you that you would like to add, uh, please do raise your hand or open your mic. Um, I think this uh, was a great ext extension session uh, to understand that we have a common problem, uh, but also that we have uh, a common objective to tackle that problem. Uh, and to bring light uh, to successful experiences that develop this. Uh, we, we thought of this topic because, of course, Digico uh, works on digital inclusion through um, basic digital skills training, uh, and we want to bring the basic back to the conversation. Digico uh, is working in collaboration with the European Commission uh, in, in dialogue for the European Year of Skills. As, as we all know, 2023 is the European Year of Skills, and when you when you analyze the communications around the importance of this uh, of this milestone, basic skills are left behind and underrepresented as well as we can see that on um, the European framework analyzing digital competencies. We are preparing an event that is going to be uh, launched uh, in May, uh, together with the launch of the European Year of Skills. And our premise is. Uh, going back to basics. We, we understand that we need to go back to basics and uh, we need to bring stories to the table. Uh, we need to advocate uh, in representation of each one uh, of us, each one of you who's bringing these uh, problems to the table and to make sure that uh, regional policymakers can address uh, this problem in the understanding of digital competencies, in the development of funding opportunities that are currently addressing this, because as we said before, if it's not represented, it's not seen and it's not taken care of. Uh, so for us, it's fundamental that we do this. We will uh, share all the content that was brought into the conversation. We will upload the video of this discussion into our community, but we will also create a statement around uh, uh, what we brought to the table, the presentation and benchmark that uh, we recently presented it, and the urgencies and uh, obstacles that you brought to this conversation. And we will share this as well, because we want to use this as a basis to the conversations that we have with policymakers uh, in May uh, around this event. So the conversation is open, you will get the document, and we will love to receive uh, more details so we can, um, we can address this uh, jointly. Uh, and that's it of, of uh, from our part. 
I, I would like to thank all of you for, for participating in, in this first networking session for a community that is growing and is becoming stronger um, as we collaborate to each other. We really get special thank to you and for taking the time to bring your successful experience uh, and share with us. Uh, it was inspiring uh, and we will uh, make sure it uh, moves on with all of the work that we do uh, as a collective. So I hope you all have a great afternoon uh, and I hope to see you on our next uh, session together.